This is Tor Bay. Uh, where we are, we're actually sitting on the, uh, the, one of the two wings of the bay. Uh, over in the distance, we have Berry Head, and on top of that is a Napoleonic uh, hill fort, a Napoleonic fort, which is actually superimposed on an old Iron Age fort, so, you know, a very sort of ancient place. This is the other wing of the bay, which is Hope Snows. Uh, in between, uh, you have the three towns, and this is a, Tor Bay is a very artificial construct that only came about in the 1970s, really. So, um, over there we have Brixham at the south end of the bay, uh, a very much of a fishing town, very different from the other two towns. Uh, in the centre we have Paynton, and at the northern end of the bay, where just around the um, corner where we are now, uh, we have Torquay, which is the largest of the three towns, but the most modern of the three towns. Um, back in the year um, 1800, there are only around 800 people that lived in, Tor in Torquay itself. Uh, before we, we sort of carry on with a little bit of the history of the bay and of Torquay, I uh, just wanted to point out uh, the island down there, which is Thatcher Rock, uh, well known for sort of, uh, as a sort of marine uh, conservation area and what we do have there it's supposed to it's called Thatcher Rock because it's supposed to look like uh, the roof of a thatched Devonshire cottage uh, but it's called Thatcher uh, because at a certain angle you can actually see a rock outcropping that does resemble uh, somebody working on the roof of that uh, of that cottage so there, there's the Thatcher idea. The genesis of Torquay as I said that uh, Torquay in, eight, uh, in 1800 only had about 800 people that several things actually changed that. Uh, first of all, the uh, British fleet used to anchor in Tor Bay. So we, we had a, a, quite a number of sort of a, a naval personnel that, that actually came ashore and visited Tor Abbey. That was one reason. So people are very familiar with this, this space. Uh, the other main reason was that uh, the English aristocracy used to have their grand tour where the sons and sometimes the daughters of the aristocracy used to sort of roam around Europe uh, for months and sometimes years at a time before they, they returned home. And uh, because they had a classical education, they would visit uh, Rome and Paris. Uh, and then with the French Revolution and uh, with the sort of rise of Napoleon, uh, between the, the sort of late 18th century and 1815, when Napoleon was finally beaten, uh, the, uh, the English couldn't leave Britain. So they actively went and they found somewhere that they thought resembled uh, the places that they liked to visit. So this area was colonised and it looks a little bit this, uh, like the south of France or the, the Italian Riviera because it's meant to be. Uh, so the, uh, the English aristocracy moved in in the early years of the 19th century and uh, if you look around you can still see uh, unusual plant life. Uh, it's, it actually resembles that and it's supposed to resemble that. And you, know, you can look at the architecture of Torquay and see Italian at villas, you can see um, different types of trees and we've got the the archetypal uh, and ubiquitous Torquay palm so we're trying to look like somewhere else and the third reason why Torquay was so popular was as a health resort and very large numbers of people came here to try and recover from various illnesses mostly consumption which was TB so um, if you look at some of our cemeteries now they're they're filled with people that, that don't actually come from Torquay and that was really the genesis of of Torquay as the English Riviera.